You're listening to a Pave Media show. Visit pavemedia.net for more podcasts and video entertainment. So, John, if you could save the world from an alien invasion in any location in the world, where would you pick? Tesco. Tesco, a particular Tesco? No, nah, just Tesco. Just any Tesco. Sure. Why? Because supplies, you know, staff are on hand. <laughs> staff are on hand. Okay, so you're going to, what, save the world by what, just scanning produce? Yeah, I'm going to save the world with low, low prices. Okay, every little helps. Yeah, that's Asda. Is it? Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> there goes that sponsorship. Oh, well, dear. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Beyond the Box, a podcast where we pitch prequels, sequels and spin-offs to films that don't have any. I'm Harry, and joining me as always is John. Hello. And also joining me this week is fellow Pave Media host, Phil Better. Hi, it's Phil Better. Wow, that really was your radio voice, Yeah, wasn't it? I decided to throw in the radio voice. <laughs> Except I'm zany uh, so and fun. <laughs> So this is the first episode of our new season, which is going to be films based off games. Mm-hmm. So it's not just video games, not just board games, could be anything. You know, get creative people. So uh, yeah, this week, Phil, you've kicked us off with uh, with Battleship. Such a great game. It's a really good game, isn't it? Yes, it's a fun game. Do you deny it, John? Is it? I don't know. I had questions, but Phil... No, no, no we're, to- we're talking about the game. The game, sure. Yeah, no, no, I had questions about the game too. Like- Did you? Well, I mean, I don't want to start on a moan, so you guys, Phil, you explain why you chose this film, and then I'll, I'll get to my issues, you know, down the line. So, so Phil, go ahead. You tell us why you chose this film. Oh, I chose this film because... Um, it's your favorite well, film, isn't it? Yeah, it is, because it has Rihanna. <laughs> and I, I'm a big fan of Rihanna. Um, actually, I am. I, I do enjoy her music and her, her, uh, her, her acting. Does yeah. she do either in this film? She she yeah. there's a bit of singing. There's a bit of singing too. She does sing. Oh, she does actually um, sing briefly. Yeah. Wait, wait is that? Yeah. Sorry, what, what, did I miss this? I think it's when they're they're on the uh, the boat and they're going to check for the first time, check out the alien vessel. Mm-hmm. And you have Tyler, whatever. You have the big, frigging, I don't know, bouncer looking dude yeah. in the military. And you have Rihanna on the machine gun. And I think during like they're traveling, like they're going to the thing. There's a bit a, a bit of singing she does. Like it's not like her big singing. It's just like a a sea shanty, if you will. And it's like kind of <laughs> under her breath. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'd love it if it was I, actually like, a yeah. sea shanty. Like <laughs> she's like yo ho ho, plunder, we run, go. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not like she's trying to show off that she she's this amazing singer. It's just like mm. you're bored and you're singing type yeah. thing. Um, I'm sure it was still in the contract when they were negotiating yeah, yeah, yeah. In this film. Rihanna must sing. Can't not have been. <laughs> I found like she, her character was like at one point she was like this really hard, hard ass uh, character, but then later on she's like playing kind of scared, and I'm like it doesn't doesn't flow. I mean, this film had a very weird structure, and it's quite obvious if you look at its uh, runtime. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that was my first complaint about this film. I was <laughs> so offended. That this was a two-hour, ten-minute movie. Yeah, like I, I thought was surprised. this. I had thought this was going to be like a tight ninety minutes. If mm-hmm. that, I was like, okay, this is a film based on the game Battleship. It's <laughs> going to be. Time can they if nothing out of else, this? it's going to be brief. Yeah. Like, and then I opened it up, and it was two hours and ten minutes. Mm-hmm. I had to split it into two because <laughs> I just, I just couldn't with this. Oh, I, but, I watched it last night lying down uh, on my bed. I watched it, and I was like, I'm probably going to fall asleep. Yet I and didn't. Did you? You no. Wow. Okay, well done. No, it was the lens flares. <laughs> <laughs> they gave J- the director gave J.J. <laughs> Abrams a run for his money with lens flare in this movie. Like, the screen is nothing but a lens flare. It was really distracting and not very nice. It doesn't end like this. Why do you want us to do, Hopper? We have no ships left. We have one. We've got a battleship. 
Phil, would you like to kick us off with a plot summary? Tell us what actually happens in this film. All right, so we start off with two brothers who are celebrating something, a birthday, and one brother being very straight and narrow, a Navy man, and the other one a complete reckless fool, goes off and tries and gets a chicken burrito for a very pretty lady. The first 10 minutes of this film tricked me. I felt genuinely tricked. Tricked by what? By the fact it was a completely different movie to what followed. Because this first 10 minutes, <laughs> yes. so it's Stellan Skarsgård is like the straight-laced Navy boy, mm-hmm. whose name, by the way, in this film is Hopper Stone. Yes. Which sounds like a breed of frog. Yeah. No, it's Stone Hopper. <laughs> it's Stone Hopper. It yeah, sounds because like Hopper's a breed of... their last name, so yeah. it's, yeah, it's Stone Hopper. Yeah, it's Stone Hopper. Stone Hopper. Yeah. And his brother is played by Taylor Kitsch. Yes. Who's just one of those, those real kind of, oh, that guy actors. Mm. Like, I think he was in a bunch of films at this time and they all bombed. I think he was in John Carter as well. Mm-hmm. He was in John Carter. He was in X-Men Origin. He played uh, Remy Le Bleu, or also known as Gambit. And he did, didn't he? That was an yeah. awful, awful character in an awful film. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as bad as the Deadpool in that movie. Well, yeah. Let's not get into that. Yeah, yeah no. Let's that's not. A, that's a, another movie for another time. Um <laughs> But yeah, he because he was such a pretty boy, I feel like he was like, oh, this is going to be like the next Tom Cruise type guy or something like that. And mm-hmm. then he was just pushed in so many movies that were fucking bad. Yeah. But yeah, he then tries to sneak into a convenience store. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, no one's stupid enough to try and climb through the vents. <laughs> but he might have sex. <laughs> does, that not, does that not count? Would, would that not hold up in court? Um, I don't think so. Well, he tells. Um, so this is it. The, the girl, the girl, the model, he comes into the bar and asks for a, a chicken, burrito. chicken burrito. Yeah, and he's like, "I will get you a chicken burrito in five minutes mm. if you agree to have sex with me." No, it was just give a moment of your time. Sure. I don't know what he just said. I will get you a chicken burrito. Give me five minutes. Yeah. She goes, "You have five minutes starting yeah. now." It feels like what follows takes longer than five minutes. <laughs> oh, oh, that was definitely longer than five minutes. He ends up getting the chicken burrito because he sneaks into the store, pays for it, but destroys the store. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He pays for the burrito, but he, no, he breaks into the store is closed. He breaks into the store through the vents, like you said. Destroying the ceiling. To the sound of the theme from the Pink Panther. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that doing? Oh, my there? God. <laughs> what about that? <laughs> I do have to give credit. The music they chose for it was kind of on point at certain points. Like, it really set the mood. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. other times you're like, like the Pink Panther, like, w- why? <laughs> the, he's not being sneaky at all. He's on 18 different cameras have caught him <laughs> sneaking yeah. in. Then he finally starts running. He's like, I have it, I have it. The <laughs> cops are chasing him. They tase him. <laughs> but yet he still is able to crawl while mm-hmm. being tased mm-hmm. and give her the burrito. It's now Because he's such a bad boy. He is. I've seen a lot of videos of people being tased because the YouTube rabbit hole thing. <laughs> All right. Sure. Look, you start on one tase, you end up 84 tases later. Look, it, it's it's weird. YouTube is weird. But I've seen military guys, like guys who are jacked or guys who are about the size of Taylor, Tyler or whatever his name is, Kish, and they ain't walking after being tased or crawling. Mm. They're going down in pain. Well, I have a theory. Maybe the majority of the electric current was being absorbed by his wig. (laughs) I think that's his actual hair. No, what, at the beginning of the movie? Oh, He's in that horrible surfer dude wig. Yeah, yeah, with long hair. Oh, that's right. That's not, yeah. yeah, yeah, You know when you get struck by lightning, but you're wearing a certain kind of shoe and it (laughs) all... That wig was definitely absorbing a lot of the electricity. (laughs) Yeah, That was a grounding wig. Yes, that is how wigs work, to be fair. So, yeah. (laughs) It seems to be the problem. I want a chicken burrito. Johnny, chicken burrito hurt. It ain't happening. Chicken burrito hurt. Kitchen's closed, Hoppa. What's your name? I'm hungry. It's not your name. If you give me five minutes, I will get you your chicken burrito. Five minutes, starting now. Chicken burrito time, I'm out. 
You've not mentioned that the first actual scene of this film it actually sets it up as an alien invasion movie. Oh yeah, which is not why, where yes. I thought this movie was going to go at all. No, what well, did you do? not know anything about? I this? knew nothing about this, and it was based on battleships, okay. and it was going to yeah. be boats fighting on the ocean. Yeah, I did not think there was going to be an alien plotline. Oh, I thought okay. it was going to be like humans fighting humans. So I was well, like, that's what I figured as well when I first heard it, and then you see the trailer and you're like, what's going on? Mm. But yeah, sorry. So I missed the beginning. I completely missed the beginning where they find a habitable planet in some sector of the u- universe and they decide, hey, we're going to send signals there and see if we get signals back. Mm-hmm. And there's one guy who actually calls it. He's like, this is going to be like Columbus wiping out the Indians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which is at the time that movie was coming out, there was a lot of quote unquote white guilt going on in movies. Mm-hmm. Where it's like they're showing what the, the the oppressed people were having, you know, mm-hmm. like the the Indians when the white people settlers came over and stuff like that. So I'm like, you just give away the whole plot right there. Well, see, the thing is, it wasn't, and this is a major problem I had with the movie because it wasn't like Columbus getting rid of the Indians. Um, it was just like, okay, some so some people travel light years across the galaxy and land. And they've got ships that are just ever so slightly more powerful than just some boats we've got out by Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 that's it. Yeah, well, that was my like, question. They literally get taken out by a, a World War Two boat. Yeah, they've got the technology to fly, travel light years in a matter of weeks, I guess. Like when they first send out the. I think it's years. Yeah, I think it's a couple of years because like uh, Hopper's not part of the navy, and then you cut to like, some time later, and he is part of the navy, and he's. Ranking high. So, yeah, they, it's like 2005, 2006. Then fast forward six years to the 2012 something games where it's the naval exercises. Both hoppers are, you know, in large and in charge. One's uh, the captain of one destroyer. The <laughs> other one is, I'm guessing, head of the firing technical people. I don't know. The chain of command definitely puzzled me as the movie went on and he suddenly yeah. became the, the most high-ranking surviving officer. I was like, how? Y- yeah. <laughs> You're clearly the most incompetent person here. Yeah. But he he has potential. He has that potential. He's a bad boy yes. with potential. About all the, you know, all the workaday people who just turn up every day, do their job well, you know, mm. obey the rules. They're all just like, where's my potential? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, fast forward, they're playing soccer or mm-hmm. football and it's the... Americans versus Japanese, and our boy Tyler, he scores one, and then he goes to make another score, but then his arch enemy on the Japanese side fouls him by kicking him in the head, so he is concussed. It's not in the head, it's in the face. Yeah, it's in the face. Not that I know much about football, but, well, firstly, he wouldn't be getting up, and the other guy would just get sent off. Yeah. Well, Americans don't know how to play football. True. Yeah, Yeah, it's true. That's John's comment on sports for the year. (laughs) <laughs> um, but yeah so he ends up deciding to take the penalty kick or whatever when everybody's like no dude you should not take it you're fucked up mm-hmm. and he's like no I know what I'm doing brah because I'm the hero brah mm-hmm. he ends up sailing the ball over the net uh, losing the game everybody's kind of disappointed it turns out that the girl the blonde bombshell that he got a chicken burrito for is actually the daughter of an admiral, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Played by Liam Neeson. Played by the great Liam Neeson. I was really disappointed he didn't have more work to do in this movie. John just grimaced at you using the word great. No, to I didn't think Liam, Liam Neeson. I know, I, you, John, you, you actively moaned. <laughs> no, I, did, I was grimacing, but no, I do think Liam Neeson is a great actor. I was just going to say, he doesn't really do accents, does he? Oh, no. no. No, <laughs> no, he's like Sean Connery. Yeah, I mean, he's in this one for all of six minutes. So I don't blame mm-hmm. him for not going like full Meryl Streep with like a full dialect. But mm-hmm. he and his daughter are not from the same continent. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> she is full mm. LA Valley girl, and he is just you know Northern Irish Liam Neeson. Gentlemen, give me a minute with Mister Hopper here. What is wrong with you? You've got skills, but I have never, ever seen a man waste them like you. Keep the ship 
out of the surf and spray, or you will plunge to destruction. Homer, sir. The fact that you know that infuriates me beyond words. But yes, they have that. They have the Chimbrisa scene, then they have the football scene, you know, where it builds up to him scoring this epic goal despite being concussed. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, he doesn't. And then the ball flies over the net and it lands. Again, it has this weird sound effect where you literally hear it. It's like it's a bomb dropping. It's like, woo! Yeah. 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 So I was like, okay, this is this is a silly, fun film about a guy. It's like, I thought it was going to have like a Private Benjamin vibe where it's going to be, okay, this is going to be a silly kind of fun film about a guy who's kind of, you know, a bit of a nerd do well, a bit of a beach bum. He's going to get enlisted into the Navy to try and impress his brother into win a hot girl, whatever, you know, classic. Mm -hmm. We've got a classic movie set up here. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of movie I can watch, you know. This is going to be fun and silly and it's going to have lots more mishaps as this, you know, crazy guy who's not suited to the Navy life, you know, Mm -hmm. learns about discipline and self-respect, etc. And then it just drops all that completely. After he actually joins the Navy, the film is just two hours of utter boredom. Yes. That's what annoyed me the most. I felt like the first ten minutes tricked me into thinking I was going to watch a much more interesting movie. It's a completely different movie because when you think of... What this movie actually is, mm-hmm. it doesn't start until like half an hour in. No, well, it starts with the opening credits, which don't start until about half an hour in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. All the stuff I just described happens before the opening credits. Yep. So one of the first things on the trivia for this thing is the convenience store break-in at the beginning is a parody of a security video posted on YouTube, which went viral, of an actual liquor store break-in. So it literally... They took their first part of their movie from a fucking YouTube clip. Wow. Well, that reference aged well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> These things always stand the test of time. And then you get, you get the NASA people and you get the stupid comedic bit of, well, you're supposed to tell me that NASA's on the phone. Well, NASA's on the phone. Oh, I hated these nerd characters, oh, especially ne- the one who survives. Yeah, ner- nerds don't do well in films for me, for, for anybody. Their, their comedy is just... Or like, because it's insulting some... to people who aren't nerdy and people who aren't nerdy, it's not really funny. Yeah, but the, I feel like this guy, the main nerd scientist, oh, he was useless. I feel like he's playing the Jeff Goldblum role, if you will. He, like, yes, absolutely. He, he's like yeah. the, oh, he's trying yeah. to be. He's trying to be. But he's not like because he's no. the dialogue in this film is garbage. So I mean, there's yes. not much anyone can do with it. But he's just so annoying. Mm. And if they, you had somebody who was charming and fun in this role, then you know it could have been a fun little side comedic character mm-hmm. instead of a character that you actively wish to death on for the entire movie. Mm-hmm. You know? I did like the grizzled, pissed off vet. I, I have to admit, I liked him. He was alright. In... He was fun. And then when he gets with the uh, <laughs> hey, I, I enjoyed him. I like grizzly old vets. Give me a break. Yeah. Well, he's uh, act, the actor is well, he's not an actor. All of the mil- and this is why the film felt really propagandary to me. All of the military people in this film, like all the old men who come and save the day at the end, mm, and are that actual guy with vets. The, yeah, they're actual vets. So he's actually a guy with no legs. Oh right, okay. Yeah. And also so. um, during the soccer scene or the football scene, the guys on the ships, the respective ships, are actual mm-hmm. from a Japanese and American warship. Okay. That were drafted in, so mm-hmm. there is that. But, but you can really actually... tell because none of them can act. Yeah, <laughs> like it's that true. guy is—he he can't act. Mm. It's kind of distracting. No, he... But I, what I, I enjoyed about him was like when the cops show up and like you have to get off this thing. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the cops would drive one of you down. Yeah, they're not mm. going to just tell you. But he goes, and then he starts going the way the cops went, and the girl's like, "What are you doing? I've never seen an alien." I'm like, "That's a funny because like." Most people would be like, I've never seen an alien. I want to see an alien. Mm -hmm. And would go off. Well, can we talk about the fight scene between No Legs That Guy and the alien? Oh, okay. If you ever wanted to... I'll say this. If you ever wanted to watch a film in which a guy who genuinely has no legs gets roundhouse kicked and not... (laughs) (laughs) This is the film for you, my friend. Yeah. (laughs) Well, every time someone fought an alien, they, they didn't die, which I found quite impressive because these are supposed to be like in exoskeletons and like they're being punched and they're flipping over things or they're getting roundhouse or like legs sweeped under and they're doing t- t- flips like i've seen people get their their legs kicked out of them they're not doing flips mm-hmm. well <laughs> they this kind film, of fall yeah i'm guessing this film was a 12 at most if not a pg it felt very for young boys I, yeah. yeah it was PG I think there's no blood in this film nobody di- there's no body count Stalin Skarsgård and a bunch of like people in the general 
scheme of things die, but no, there's you no, don't no, see it. No major characters get killed after still after Alexander Skarsgård dies. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get that Battleship is a popular game. I don't think ten year old boys today or ten year old boys ten years ago when this film came out or eight years ago whenever it was, I don't think they were playing Battleship. See, I was playing Battleship when I was ten, and that's like twenty three years ago. So obviously, I'm not the demographic they're selling to, but I don't think kids with all the technology that there is available to kids they're not playing these type of board games it's older people are playing board games and playing like battleship and that and even then there's better more interesting games to be played yeah i just can't what well, harry you look like you disagree well as the young person of the podcast okay sure um uh, I think that some, youth. yeah i think that some kids still are playing battleship i was playing battleship probably in the last 10 years were you excited when this film came out uh, I didn't see it at the cinema, but I have oh. seen it before and got quite excited about it. Yeah, okay. Not, 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 not like, oh my god, this is my dream come true. I've always wanted a film version of this. Yeah, it was just like, what, 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 what is this? Yeah, this, this is not really? something you turn into a film. I'd love no. to see what well, this actually exactly. is. And that's, and that's my <laughs> problem with it is that the thing with Battleship is this is the thing that happens with a lot of computer game films. Maybe nowadays we have very you know rich computer games that are really like story driven and character driven. You know, mm. but. When you look at board games and old computer games as well, a lot of the times, they don't have any characters. No. And consequently, this film doesn't have any characters. Yeah. <laughs> like, nobody in this film has a personality mm-hmm. at all. They're just kind of people saying words. Mm-hmm. And you really need, for this kind of film to work, you need personalities. You know, you, you, I, I can imagine a version of this film where they took the principle of Battleship and then they put a whole bunch of funny characters or interesting characters in it mm. to make it an entertaining film but they didn't they just kind of nobody like Rihanna and um, Jesse Plemons for the first like 10 minutes again they're on screen together a lot yeah. they're, they're kind of just commenting on things I was like okay yeah. are these going to be like the sassy side characters who are going to be like the Greek chorus who are going to be like well he's stupid isn't he <laughs> I was like okay I can see this but then they don't have any screen time together after the first 10 minutes once mm-hmm. it all kicks off they're just doing their own thing Rihanna's entire role in this film is just like the odd sassy quip and just running around and reacting to things she, she has. Things. She has. She has no character, though. No. She has no personality. No. Like, no. what is her name? Rihanna. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So um, that's the main problem I had with is that there was nobody to grab onto. There was nothing to hold onto because every character was just pancake flat. I mean, the lengths that they went to in this film to <laughs> replicate the game were just blew my mind. Well, like, what did you want? <laughs> no, it was um, hilarious. Should we talk about the most hilarious scene then? Sure. I just loved the scenario that they had to build themselves to just shouting numbers on a screen. Yes, yeah, that's what I yeah. it was so there were so many things of just like, <laughs> okay, well it's dark. Uh, they, they they can't see us, which means well well they're they're not attacking us now, which means that they can't see us, but also we can't see them. Mm-hmm. And it's just like Almost oh, as God, if there was a barrier oh, between he, us, here yeah. we go, here we go, bloody hell. And Okay, but radar's not working because mm-hmm. we can't see their ships on radar for whatever reason, which isn't going to do mention earlier in the film, but there's, there's never any kind of explanation no. or even any comment to the fact that that is a thing that modern ships have now is essentially radar. You know, they can hide from radars, essentially. Sure. Yep, okay, so now we've got the boys. They're going to help us, and so we'll be able to see slightly where they are, and we can just do, sort of do a, a hit and miss. We'll shoot, see if we hit them or not. Oh, the buoys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Booey, sorry, yeah. Because I was like, okay, there's just going to be that one scene and it's building up and building up to that scene. Then, oh, there it is! And it's exactly what I expected. I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give it that. This film definitely replicated an authentic feeling of watching somebody else play Battleship. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> You've summed that up very yeah. well. <laughs> India 3-7. India 3-7. Loaded. Take on the coordinates. Romeo 2-6. Romeo 2-6. So we're hot over here. Missile's good to go. Let's light him up, Captain Nagata. Captain Nagata. So they ultimately wipe out all of the aliens just by firing old-timey weapons at them. Yep. And then there's a whole thing about, oh, I'm going to ask Liam Neeson, as in Sam's dad, if I can finally propose to you. Mm-hmm. He does. Liam Neeson says no. 
And then he's like, well, but maybe but let's go and get a chicken burrito together. Mm-hmm. Call back to the original scene. Ho, ho, ho. Movie ends. Yeah. So ends Battleship. Yeah. Oh, I didn't God. like this film. Did you not? No. Really, you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Phil. I tried. <laughs> oh, Phil, I'm glad you, you've, you've chosen this because it was definitely on our list for this season. Yeah. It was uh, either top one or two for this season, definitely, because I, I knew there would at least be stuff to talk about. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> There was some stuff. There, there wasn't a lot, but there was enough just to eke out, you know, an episode here. Well, I feel like 90% of what we talked about happens in the first 10 minutes or the last 10 minutes, because the rest of the movie is just explosions, just CGI explosions. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. Like, there's explosions. Yeah. And, I really and zoned out for, in the middle. For just every single moment. Oh, he touched the spaceship. Explosion. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah there's all sorts. No, no. Yeah. He gets shocked and then lasers. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I cannot <clears throat> express enough my annoyance that this was a two hour, 10 minute movie. That's fair. This could have been 75 minutes and would have lost nothing. <laughs> just a few a few CGI explosions. Yeah. Did you guys see the post credit scene, by the way? Yes, I stayed for the post credit. Oh, I didn't. Did you not? No. <laughs> oh, it's great. So they cut to the Scottish Highlands, mm. and there's some Scottish teenage boys, uh, and they find another one of the. A bit of space debris, basically. Mm-hmm. They try and break into it, and then some random, like, Scottish character actor, like this middle-aged man, comes in. He's like, in the broadest, thickest Scottish. He was basically doing like a groundskeeper, Willie. Okay. He was just like, Willie will break into it, and he just like does. This, there's a whole montage of him like using a hammer and a chainsaw and an electric blowtorch mm-hmm. and everything, and then eventually he breaks into it, and then you see like from inside the pod, mm-hmm. you see them peer in, and then you see a space alien shoot its hand up and they all scream and run away. Boom, end of movie. <laughs> Setting yeah. up a sequel that never happened because this movie tanked. Wow. Right, should we get some drinking games? Sure, yeah. Oh, God. So, I've got a... Uh, well, I've got a list of three drinking games, but they've got sub Okay, items. sub-drinking games. What, what do you do on a sub-drinking game? Well, essentially, just drink for any, of, any one of these events. Okay. So, the first one is drink for things you know are wrong. Okay. For example... Um, the information broadcast that came from the satellite dishes mm-hmm. was a beam of lit up energy, okay, yeah. which of course we all know yeah. mm-hmm. is just not a thing. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, that slightly. annoyed me. Oh, so we're drinking for bad science at this point, yeah? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Drink, drink for things okay. that are wrong. We've covered a few of these already. Okay. So, you know, uh, Hooper carries on functioning whilst being tased. Yeah. Covered that, yeah. Sam took the burrito from the creepiest man in the world. Yeah. And if you could, John, I'd like you to now edit in a clip of the conversation they have at the bar and just like his tone of voice and everything everything sounds threatening oh absolutely yeah yeah what seems to be the problem i want a chicken burrito johnny chicken burrito hurt it ain't happening chicken burrito hurt kitchen's closed hopper what's your name i'm hungry it's not your name if you give me five minutes I will get you your chicken burrito. Five minutes. Starting now. Chicken burrito time, I'm out. It's just horrible. It's funny, she's, it she's is, a fun, horrible. cool, accessible chick. You know, yeah. she's, she's a supermodel, but she eats burritos in bars and she's, you know. Yeah, yeah my, my question yeah. is first of all, if she wanted a burrito and it's across the street is a shop, <laughs> why are you going to a bar? To get a burrito. She wants a dirty a bar burrito. She's, mm. She wants to walk on the wild side. No one wants a dirty bar burrito. So I've got another one then. Uh, Hooper is able to stand up instantly after taking a full-on kick to the face. We've covered that quite... Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that ship that gets, that gets taken out by the satellite, but is then... Well, so the ships are designed to take a high-speed water impact as a landing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely fine. Yeah. But getting hit by a, a, a small little satellite or a sniper bullet... Yeah, that's just... Not okay. No. No. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Because they don't land softly underwater. They like they crash into the water like meteorites. Yeah. Or already covered as well, the ship that hasn't been used in a decade has plenty of fuel and live weapons and mm-hmm. an engine that starts without an issue. Yeah. Can't see any mm-hmm. reason why any of those things would be a thing. Bear in mind... And a £1,000 live missile. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, that, they, I think they had quite a few of them. They just had one left at the end. Oh, I think okay. It was. Fine, yeah. And... Uh, Bear in mind that to actually let, let this ship depart from the harbour, they had to... Uh, what's the word? They had, well, they had to cut through these giant metal chains. Yeah. Yeah, the um, plasma cutters. Yeah, thank you. With, with, with plasma cutters. Mm-hmm. That ship's not been moved in a long time. No. 
Because <laughs> if it had, then they could just undo those chains rather than cut through them. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the bit where they drifted the ship, dropped the anchor. Yes. Nobody fell over. No. <laughs> even, though, even though the ship nearly sank. Nobody was holding on to anything. Nobody fell That's over. True. It was just fine. Yeah. I completely forgot about that part. Yeah. Everyone and the ship like, didn't oh, cool. rip in half. <laughs> and the ship didn't rip in half. Yeah, I didn't cover that. Yeah. Oh, there's one I've missed here somewhere. The, uh, Hooper and the Japanese guy, when their third ship is getting torn apart, mm-hmm. they're crawling up the hull as it's uh, doing a Titanic Be- thing and just sort oh, of yeah. sinking. They're barely crawling. They're pretty much walking. Mm-hmm. It's a vertical surface. Yes. I was <laughs> about not, to say something. Like, Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're not trying to hold on to anything. They're not struggling. Mm-hmm. They're just... Do you even see them jump off? I don't know if you do. I can't remember. I'll be honest, yeah, at you this kind point, of... I was half watching. So. so they were on the back end of the ship, and they're like, okay, we have to jump. And then it goes to a wide shot mm-hmm. of the alien spinning cutty thingies. Yeah, that just comes out of the ship and splits the ship in half. Yeah, so I you assume that. they jumped off just before the wide shot. Well, I mean, but also did. they're they're fucking miles above, or not miles, but they're pretty fucking high up. Mm. There ain't no way they're walking after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's there's a lot wrong with that. And then the last one is um, is of course when the whole facility gets blown up at the bottom somehow. All the shield, uh, the shields, the the dishes are rigged with explosives. Yes. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. You see, what happened there was when they just they shot the big gun. Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. It created a power surge through the the wires. Why? And that why? destroyed. Why? 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 <laughs> Look, I'm trying to give you a somewhat plausible explanation. But also, why are you sticking up for this movie? <laughs> I, I I I don't know. But my my question is. I didn't know satellites or those things had high-grade detonations and uh, ammunition in them to cause a blow-up. Because I don't know about you, but when something gets overheated or something, mm. it does not explode. No. No. <laughs> Most of the time it goes, Poof. That's the explosion. And I'm guessing if you times it by a thousand, they're not going like they've been hit with C4. Pretty much, yeah. So, um... Yeah, that's everything that I thought was wrong in this movie. Okay. Um, so a drink for each one of those. Cool. Next Hammered already. Game. <laughs> uh, Phil, have you got one? Lens flare. Drink for lens flare. Very yep. good, very good. Yeah. Pretty much I'm killing you because the whole movie's a lens flare. It really is. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'll start with an obvious one for mine, which is drink for battleship game references. Oh, yeah, solid. Uh, <laughs> why am I good one. that one? No. I had that one, actually. I mean, the lengths they go to. It's... Yep, they do. Okay, uh, the last one I've got here is product placement. Yeah, what did you notice? Plenty of. So you've got Coke. Yeah. Standard. Sure, yeah, they're Standard. everywhere, yeah. Budweiser as well at but, the same time. Mm-hmm. Jeep. Jeep, yes. Quite quite movie. significantly in this. Mm-hmm. Um, you see the logo. The Royal Navy. Well, the Navy. Yeah, yeah. Alexa, like this film is just pure propaganda. I was expecting like a, a Your Country Needs You kind of most. Veterans. Most yeah. You know, it's all right to be a veteran. Prosthetics, they're pretty good. They can beat up an alien if you, if you lose your legs in the war. Yeah. Get a prosthetic. You yeah. can smack someone in the face with it, be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and finally, is uh, out of date LG phones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Phil, have you got any more? No, you, you took mine with the uh, Battleship references. Oh, okay, I have a few more. I'll just whiz through them very quickly. Uh, drink for cartoon sound effects. Yeah. So, you know, okay. one or two in there. Yeah. Stupid slow mo camera effects. That's what I've written down. I think I was annoyed <laughs> at this, but I just wrote down drink for stupid slow mo camera effects. Like, yeah. you know, when everyone's walking or running away from an explosion or something and they jump and then everything slows down I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sick of that shot yep it's in everything drink for cable news montages mm-hmm. lots and lots of those did you notice Paired Hapley is in this film I have no idea who that is uh, he is the well the character Paired <clears throat> Hapley is in Parks and Recreation he's the the newsreader in Parks and Rec and in this film he plays an actual newsreader which I think I know who you mean is he black yeah the black guy yeah. I do know him yeah of course you've seen so Parks, he's getting yeah. pigeonholed as a newscast as a, as a newscast yeah <laughs> it, was, it, it took me right out of the film not that I was ever really in the film but yeah. anyway uh, okay a couple more drink for puzzling location changes <laughs> sure so many scenes where it just is like now we're here you know the yellow text being typed up yeah. like, now we're here now we're here it's like where are we yeah. and why and why yeah what's what end drink when a child is almost killed <laughs> like all sure. of the actions you know the Hong Kong and then the bit with the the bridge collapses. Yeah. Oh, all yeah. the cars. 
at the, every time there's mass destruction, you, you start with a child, and then you see mm-hmm. the child watch people die, mm-hmm. and then presumably the child lives. I don't know, but no, there's a lot the of that. The child lives, but has PTSD. For, for life, life, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's normally also the child is just sort of standing still mm. underneath something that's falling. Yes, that's always a thing. That, that happens quite yeah. a lot. And finally, drink every time Rihanna gets a line of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> so three drinks. Three drinks, yeah, that's a pretty safe one, yeah. Anyway, that's all we're drinking games. And you have killed us. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you've <laughs> done the drinking games, you are now dead. <laughs> but Beyond the Box Fed and Pave Media Inc. do not take any responsibility for you being an idiot and drinking this much. True. Just putting it out there. <laughs> Suggestions only. <laughs> that is a disclaimer we should always use. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We return to Pearl without having outperformed every other ship on that ocean. I will personally be honored. We've ended up in a department run by some kind of Donald Trump, Mike Tyson mutant combo. What was that, Petty Officer Rakes? Nothing, sir. I swear you said Donald Trump. Want to clarify? I think I heard of Mike Tyson as well. If you did, it was only in reference to the fact that you both project great physical intensity, sir. Flattery. Cool, right, so before we get to some sequels, I'm going to talk about Patreon. So, Phil, you know that uh, Beyond the Box Set is on patreon.com slash Beyond the Box Set. Yes? Yes. Yes, Good. of course I do. You guys have great episodes that you put up there. Oh, thank you very much. So, yeah, if uh, any of you listeners have enjoyed the show and would like to become a Patreon supporter, we'd be very appreciative. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go to, like I said, patreon.com slash Beyond the Box Set. And if you do, then you will get a bonus show from us for, well, no matter how much you donate, as little as you want, or as much as you want, whatever yep. you feel we're worth. It's a pay as you feel I feel tiered, you should system. pay a hundred dollars a month. Great. Is that what you think we're worth? It's what Phil's paying, right? so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, sure. <laughs> cool, alright, Phil, well, I'll, uh, I'll expect that payment by the end of the month. That's all right. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Today being the 30th of January, so get on it. <laughs> Yeah, if you do, then you get a bonus show where we review films in the cinema right now, which is good fun. We've got to record one of them after this, haven't we? We've got to do Glass. I believe so, yes. That's, we've got some things to say about that, yeah, don't well, we? I have much to say oh. about Glass. Oof, there is crikey. much to discuss. There's much to discuss. Yeah. <laughs> but that'll probably be out by the time you're listening to this, uh, so that will be there. Uh, also, once a month, each of our patron supporters will get a 30-second advert slot to go on the show. Um, and also, once a month, we will pick one patron supporter who gets to choose an episode for us to do um, on the main show, or if you want to do a film that has sequels already, then we'll do that on the bonus show. Mm-hmm. So, all that is available at patreon.com slash beyond the box set. Fantastic. Hi, I'm Mike from the Genuine Chit Chat podcast, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. I speak to a wide variety of guests, from travellers to musicians, to those afflicted with mental or physical illnesses. There's really no subject that's off limits, from movies to politics, and even controversial topics ranging from sex to drug reform and political correctness. So if you still believe in the art of conversation, are intrigued by healthy debates with different ideas and perspectives you may not have thought of, and want a podcast where every episode is about something different with a variety of guests, then this may be the podcast for you. You can hear us on YouTube and all your favourite podcast apps, and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. So if you want to hang out and listen to honest conversations with interesting people, then come to Genuine Chit Chat, where I'm your host, Mike Burton. Okay then, so... Who would like to go first? Uh, do you want me to go first? Sure. Should, do, should we have a guest sandwich again? So me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil, you. That works. Okay, cool. So, I've done a direct sequel. Okay. Much like in the original film, we're going to start with a cold open. This time, it's going to be set in a mysterious science facility deep in the African jungle. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to have a generic scientist type presenting an urgent report to a generic military boss type. Uh, I'm sold already. Who, yeah. who, who's playing who? Who's a good generic scientist type? The military guy I got already. Mm. I can't remember his name. Um, give me a second. These Gen- aren't major characters, so this is just for the opening scene. Generic scientist guy. Um, the awkward guy from the in between us. Ooh. Oh, do you mean Simon Bird? Yeah. Okay, that could work. That yeah. could work. He could work, yeah. Speaking of awkward science guys, though, did you notice Rami Malek was in this movie? Was he? For like a yes. second. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It, it, uh... He's literally a background character. He's like a, on the destroyer, I think, on Liam Neeson's yeah. ship. He has like one line that he gives to Alexander Skarsgård, I think, and then he gets blown up. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. I was like, is that Rami Malek? And then, oh, never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 
so, okay, fine. So Sam and Bird, playing a generic scientist, is presenting an urgent report to... Who did we say was the generic military boss? Hold on. Again, bear in mind, this is it really is only seen in the film, so <laughs> it doesn't need to be someone who's leading the role. His name is Steve Harris. He was in The Rock and in a few other movies. Sure, we'll go with that. Steve Harris. We just need a character actor. So... Simon Bird, playing a generic scientist, presents an urgent report to Steve Harris, playing a generic military type. Uh, and the scientist basically says that the experiments are going well, but he's concerned that the amount of radioactive waste they're dumping may be proving more damaging to the local environments than they'd feared. Bear in mind, just a reminder, they're in deepest, darkest African jungle. Mm-hmm. So the generic military boss takes the file and says they'll look into it. Uh, then he takes the file, and as soon as the scientist leaves, he just drops the file straight into the shredder. Mm-hmm. And then we cut from that. That's our cold open. And then we cut to Hooper and Samantha's weddings. So obviously they got okay. engaged. They got well. They got sort of engaged at the end of the original film. Yeah. So now the wedding is happening. It's on a boat, obviously. Maybe Rihanna's like the ordained minister, so she's like you know give give her more dialogue than she had in the whole original film. She gets to like present the whole wedding mm-hmm. just to bring Ooh. her back for this one scene. Anyway, he's Hooper's obviously very nervous because you know Liam Neeson's walking his daughter down the aisle and he's obviously giving him evils and stuff. But uh, mm-hmm. you know maybe we'll have some little comedy moments. Maybe he'll trip over his vows or something. He'll, he'll do something to screw it up. But yeah, on the whole, he gets through it. They get married, happy ever after. Fine. I mean, that's not the end of the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> the um, end. The that's end. Amazing. But, yeah. Anyway, they get married. It's fine. And then they decide to go on the honeymoon. And because they are, you know, adventure-loving, military, outdoorsy types, they decide that for their honeymoon, rather than like a typical, you know, beach holiday or whatever, they are going to go on a nature trek through Africa. Mm-hmm. See how it's all starting to tie Of together. course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what they're going to do is they're going to have a river cruise up the Congo, and there's going to be wildlife spotting, safari, hiking, the lot. So it's going to be a real, like, you know, adventure holiday yeah. honeymoon. They're both very excited, and there's obviously going to be a scene where Liam Neeson's going to be like, you take care of my girl. My girl gets out on this holiday, I will find you, I will kill you. I have a certain oh. set of skills. I will, you know, it's going to be all he of that. He has to have that. He yeah, it's going to be all of that. that yeah. So then we're going to cut to the honeymoon, which is the main part of the movie, is them on their honeymoon. Uh, because it's a river cruise, you know, they're on this river cruise up the Congo, so that, that means there's plenty of room for a supporting cast, who are also on a similar holiday. So I was feeling we can have... Willem Dafoe as obligatory obnoxious rich guy. Mm-hmm. Barkad Abdi is going to be the cat, you know, from uh, what's that film of Tom Cruise? Mission captain. Mission. Captain. Barkad Abdi is the African actor who says, "I am the captain now." Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Sorry, Tom Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> captain Phillips. <laughs> captain Phillips. Yeah. Uh, Bark- <laughs> I'm like, that was a journey. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Barkad Abdi from Barkad Abdi from Captain Phillips. Yeah. He's playing the captain of the. Cruise of, of the cruise. Okay. So he's literally is the captain now. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. <laughs> he has to have a line that I'm the captain now. We well, should just say I am the captain. There's no now about it. He's always been the captain. Okay. So. No. I, no. I'd like it if if you could that literally his his only line in the film is I am the captain now. Not just once, all the time. That's all he says. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna change it. So oh. there's gonna be another actor, an, an older actor, maybe like a Morgan Freeman type, playing the captain. Mm. But as soon as they board the ship. He's going to keel over from a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And Barker Abdi is the first mate. So then he'll just say, I am the captain now. And then everyone's <laughs> like, fine, good. You seem yep. the most qualified. Go for it. And he's the captain. And that's fine. Okay. I would like to carry on and just if, just whatever you can do mm-hmm. so that the script always leads to his only line being, I am the captain now. Okay. Whatever people ask him, you know, well, it, I just, mean, just the appropriate thing for him to say is, I am the captain now, unless you've got other He stuff does going have on. some other dialogue, to be ah. honest. It's, it's hard. I'm sorry, but. Ah, I have to, John, you've ruined this. I'm sorry. I mean, someone else could say this, but I've not really packed out a very. This is the worst sequel ever you've ever done. Let me finish. <laughs> so we've got him. We've got Willem Dafoe as an obnoxious rich guy. We've got. It's all stereotypes. We've got Abaka Dabdi as a captain. And we have Ariana Grande as the obligatory, unqualified pop singer making an acting appearance for no reason. Okay. Yep. No. So there are other, there are other you know characters in this basically, mm-hmm. just filling out filling out the milieu of this sequel. So they're floating through a particularly dangerous stretch of rainforest, trying to see wild animals, and the captain warns them that they all need to stay inside the boat. He's like, "This is a particularly dangerous part of the jungle. Please stay inside the boat at all times for this part of the voyage." And Willem Dafoe, the obnoxious rich guy, mm-hmm. he's going to get up and onto deck and complain. He's like, he came on this goddamn cruise to see some wild animals and he hasn't seen so much as a pelican so far. What am I paying you for, goddammit? And he wants to get off the boat. So he demands that they pull anchor more up so they can have, a, have an explore through the jungle and see some actual yeah. Africa. 
And the captain's like, no, you can't do that. You don't understand. This is There's a lot of very dangerous wildlife. The insurance won't cover it. Just stay on the boat. And in a couple of days, we'll get to, you know, a safer spot. And then you'll see all the animals you paid to see. Mm-hmm. But Will and Defoe's just having none of it. And so the two of them end up in this huge argument. While this is happening, in the middle of this argument, the boat is suddenly rocked by a heavy thud. Like something impacts the boat and the boat shakes. And everyone's like, what the hell was that? You know, they look over the side and they see something large moving in the water. So then while they're looking at, while they're all peering overboard, from the other side of the boat, something else impacts the boat with equal strength, Mm -hmm. causing the boat to rock again. And this time, the impact knocks Willem Dafoe's character over the protective rail Mm -hmm. into the water. Mm -hmm. So Hopper and the captain try to pull him back up. But suddenly, something huge and grey leaps out of the water and swallows a screaming millionaire whole. Mm -hmm. Just bites him, finishes him off. The rest of the group... Do we see what it is? Well, this is the thing. The rest of the group are stunned. And then Hooper says... Was that what I think it was? And then, about 25 minutes into the movie, <laughs> the title sequence <laughs> flashes up. Yeah. Oh, God. Battleship 2. Hungry, hungry hippos. Oh, God. <laughs> I saw it coming. I saw it coming when you said the uh, giant grey thing. I'm like, is it? <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. Oh. Yeah. So, the rest of the movie is essentially a classic jungle survival film. <laughs> as the characters attempt to get out of the jungle while being stalked by giant carnivorous hippos, Mm -hmm. who we discover have become supersized and hungry for human flesh uh, as a result of the nuclear experiments being conducted by that secret US military base that we Mm -hmm. saw at the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. So eventually our crew of survivors make it to the base themselves and find out what's been going on. Mm. After threatening to unmask the operation, the military locks them all up and threatens to perform dangerous experimental operations on them, Mm -hmm. involving removing their internal organs one at a time. Mm -hmm. Operation? <gasps> yes. Yeah. No, okay. I got that. Just making sure you're following what's going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, however, they're interrupted by the hippos who invade the base, uh, <laughs> causing panic and chaos. Interrupted by the hippos. Excuse me. <laughs> well, <laughs> sir, you we can... had to be doing those tests here. <laughs> this, this, this isn't okay with hippo regulations. Yeah. Well, these are giant radioactive flesh hungry hippos. Mm-hmm. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Brilliant. Also, have you ever seen a hippo run? No, no, they're genuinely fast. You wouldn't think because they're so large. Oh, I thought they... you were going to say it's really funny, but okay. No, no, they can outrun. It's they can probably outrun is a funny too. Like a hippo could outrun Us- Usain Bolt. Sure, they are super fast for their size. Sure. Anyway, so I just imagine that like them being chased down corridors by these giant radioactive hippos mm-hmm. that are super fast. I I rather not. Sure. Yeah. I I want to sleep tonight. Well, I'm thinking nightmares? it's kind of like Ju- Jurassic the first Jurassic Park movie or any Jurassic Park movie, but, but except the Velociraptors are replaced by hippos. Mm-hmm. That's the vibe I'm thinking here. There's definitely got to be a scene though. So the, the hippos have invaded the military base. It's all panic and disarray. They're just running around eating people. There's got to be a scene where our heroes run into a security office and look at a security kind of camera feed and all they can see is like white dots running around being swallowed by hippos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, they realise that the only way to defeat the hippos is to construct a series of giant cages that drop from the ceiling, using themselves as bait. All right. <laughs> In what essentially <laughs> amounts to a mouse trap scenario. <laughs> Jesus, how many how many how many games did you get into this movie? Well, let me wrap it up and then Yeah. Um, so they've got a whole relay system involving sliding down a slide, climbing a frame, jumping through a bathtub for some reason, mm-hmm. activating the cage, which falls and traps the hippo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ariana Grande can be like bait, I don't know. Yeah, oh yeah, Ariana Grande's role in all of this is basically just to run around and make the occasional sassy quip. So she's really the Rihanna of this story. Yeah. At one point, the one thing I do want Ariana Grande to do is to, she's going to have a point where she shoots a hippo through the head, mm-hmm. and then she'll just say, thank you, Next. Which is the title of her current hit single. Oh, God. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I realised what I just realised what audience I was writing to yeah. at this point. <laughs> it's inescapable. It's, it was number one for like seven weeks. It's clearly not inescapable. No, not to you. <laughs> Ultimately, the survivors escape, they blow up the facility, mm. and they sail back to civilization. And that's kind of the end of the movie. But there's going to be a post credit scene, obviously. Mm-hmm. So Hooper and Sam, they manage to, you know, get out of the jungle, but they want to continue their honeymoon now that they've survived this. Yeah. So the post credit scene sees them arriving safely in Morocco, where Sam says something to the effect of, I can't wait for our trek across the desert, which is the next part of what they're going to be doing. So they pay a tour guide and he's like, great, sure, we're ready for you now, madame and monsieur, whatever. But first, we just need to load up your donkey with supplies. But careful, he's quite temperamental. And then we we end on a close-up of a pissed-off donkey narrowing its eyes. 
Great. Wow. So, so, so no one was even like say say the word or anything. No one's gonna. Say, I don't think we need to say the word buckaroo, but uh, mm. it's it's implied. It's heavily implied. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's got like a, a small name tag around his neck. Yeah. Just yeah. You exactly. wouldn't see it. You'd need to zoom in to see it. Well, this but... is a very subtle movie. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. So subtle. Way. Subtle is <laughs> key in this so, movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is a uh, battleship two, hungry hungry hippos, and other Hasbro titles. I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. So, any questions? <sighs> No, not really. Phil? None. Mm. I'm just disappointed. I only have one game in mind. You got mm. like 25,000. Oh, I've only got one in mind as well, Phil, so don't worry. Yeah. Well, Woo-hoo. Phil, let's, let, let's, see, let's hear yours then. All right, so I actually kind of have two. Okay. As oh, you lied! <laughs> <laughs> you bloody liar! <laughs> okay, what is my pitch? And I was talking with a friend, and she pitched me, because I was like, have you seen this movie? And she's like, yes. I'm like, what would your sequel be to this movie? Mm. So I'll give hers. She's like, an alien is left on Earth, a baby alien. They raise it up, and then it goes crazy and starts killing everybody, trying to connect back to its home world. Okay. That was her pitch. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That sounds. I'm like, feasible. that's that fits with the theme of this show. So yes, it's good. Uh, she didn't come up with a title, but that's fine. Mine takes place exactly at the end credits. So you're okay. in Scotland. Oh, okay. We're yeah. following the Scottish guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're going boom. You have the arm that comes up, and the kids go running, and they're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I want Rory Spence to be uh, in it. <laughs> sure. Just to be one of those <laughs> kids running away. Yep. Just and cause. these kids are like 14 years old, just to be clear. Yeah. Oh, he could play the crazy man. I suppose. Uh, listeners, R- Rory Spence is another podcaster who did actually come on the show with you, Phil. Yes, um, yeah, our for... wolf episode back in our Halloween season. Yeah, yeah um, he, 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 he runs a great podcast called Dog Hair Presents, mm-hmm. so uh, everyone should go and check him out if yeah. you feel like it. Definitely. It's a great, great podcast. So, yeah, just a little cameo by him. The alien gets out, doesn't know what to do, so it starts looking for materials. And this goes on. He's kind of like playing a cat and mouse game with people. You know, the, the uh, Scottish military trying to catch him, and he's hiding. But he's gathering materials to build something. Okay. This has nothing to do with the rest of Battleship. No one from the original cast comes back. Okay. Except for Liam Neeson, who is a short cameo because it's Liam Neeson. Mm-hmm. But he starts building something, and he builds a, t- a tower that's straight up. And he starts climbing up, trying to get the little device to send a s- signal out to space. And they start shooting at the tower, and different parts of the tower starts coming off. Quick pause. John, when you hear somebody else's sequel, are you just constantly trying to guess what they're doing? Of course, yeah. Yeah, because, Phil, you've just said a tower that goes straight up. I'm just thinking, okay, uh, Rapunzel, no. Jack and the Beanstalk, <laughs> no. Black... <laughs> it's I'm just trying it, it, out multiple things until, like, until you rule something out by giving another detail. Is the rock going to show up? Is it Skyscraper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I should have done that. <laughs> I feel like no. if The Rock had been in this movie... I've got to, I will admit, while writing my idea, I had a lot of writer's block because I initially just called it Battleship 2, The Rock's in this one. Okay. Sure. <laughs> that was my idea. That's the whole pitch, yeah. The Rock Perfect. or Statham oh. could have improved this movie tenfold. I, I, I didn't continue with it. I, just couldn't, I didn't have anything. There's no plot there. No, yeah. yeah Sorry, just build... do carry on. It's fine. He builds a tower and they start shooting at the blocks or the building that he's building and Pieces are flying off, and it's kind of wiggly, and he tries and sends up a, a signal to the space to get the aliens to come back. It's called Battleship 2, Jenga Edition. Oh! oh you the got one us. I couldn't get in. Oh, how I did thought I you miss guys, that? How I thought you would have got that? it with the blocks coming off, and it's getting wiggly, and I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> I was thinking, like, Tetris, maybe? Uh, but that's not a Hasbro game. I was going with Hasbro games. Uh, but you actually went branded. <laughs> yeah, I went branded. I went branded because I'm like, they're trying I'm, to do their universe. Let's bring in some more of their games. Uh, I've, not, I've not researched my branding on mine. <laughs> I was thinking Monopoly, but I'm like, how can I connect it together? Mm. It's and Monopoly then, Hasbro. Yeah, Monopoly's Hasbro. Is it? Okay. And some of your... Um... Hasbro's like the Disney of board games. All the big yeah, ones they are. Those, so. they yeah, they I, thought that, I thought that Monopoly was uh, Waddington's. don't know if that's still a thing or if just my Monopoly set is quite old. I think they bought Waddington's. Well, that makes sense then. That works. But like, I had some ideas for other things to put into the, uh, into the thing, but your listeners' suggestions had some of it. So I'm like, I'm not going to... I don't want to sound like I'm ripping them off, so... Yeah, the, 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 there's a lot of listener suggestions stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, that, that, that'll be a thing. Okay, cool. 
Oh, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, that's that. I, it's not my best one. I've come up oh, with better right. ones. No, um, Phil, that's great. You had want, a good you, reveal. You yeah. just wanted to build to a reveal, and you got both me and John with it. So, you know, yeah, well, done. well done. Yes. So that's always a win if you're gonna mm-hmm. if you're gonna do a thing with your story and you <laughs> do that. Okay, so mine um, is going to be set uh, right afterwards. Okay. Um, so back in 2012 or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, one of the aliens actually escaped. Okay. Um, which uh, they, they, it got away. The ones uh, in Hawaii, not the one that was in Scotland in the city. Yeah, yeah, the, the, one, one of the Hawaiian ones. Um, sure. I think it was actually the one that actually touched Hopper on the face. Okay, sure. Yeah, got away. And uh, it turns out that the touching on the face thing was a two-way mind meld. It was oh. doing that to try and get information from him. Right. As in okay. just like, well, you're clearly mm. the leader, so I'm going to try and work out what your plan is, what you're doing, that sort of thing. Not really much happened, but it got a bit of sort of intel about planet Earth. Sure. So the alien has um, has now decided to go on a mission of intelligence across America. Okay. Like a road trip? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. I'm sensing some montages being built here. Mm-hmm. You know, actually, I've not got a single montage on oh, here. Wow, okay. <gasps> Crazy. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> well, there's plenty of bits that I've He's not written, alien. so you can maybe okay. count them as montages. I don't sure, know. sure. Yes, but uh, being a mission of intelligence across America, there's actually not much to get, so it takes a long, long time. Ah, uh, very good, very good. A dig there towards Americans. Sorry, guys. <sighs> you right with that, Phil? Phil's Canadian, really, isn't he? I know. I'm Canadian, but going across Canada is just as long. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it's a lot more boring (laughs) the majority of the film is just going to be the alien getting into all kinds of different situations and trying to hide hide in plain sight which is he still wearing the crazy armor suit I think that he he, he's going to have to dress down okay should we say um, How's he? Well, he looks like an off-brand orc. How's that going to pass? Maybe right. he goes to a lot of conventions. Oh, oh, sure, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm always on my way to a convention. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you. You're no, up- no, no, no. If that's his excuse, whenever he gets pulled oh, over, right. he's like, yeah. "Yeah, I'm on my way to a sci-fi convention because they're everywhere." Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. That's good. Yeah. I like it. Great. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, so he keeps finding new people who he wants to try and get the intelligence from, just to learn about like his local area, learn a bit more about this weird continent or this weird planet that he's on, mm-hmm. just so that he can. You know, do the best he can to either conquer the planet or get in communication with his own species. And is he in an ET yeah. situation where he's out of contact with his own people and he, he's oh, kind yeah. of lost? Yeah, his he's com- yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. Okay, fine. Right. Yeah, I feel I mean, like this would work better as a TV show than a movie. You know what? Actually, Phil, yeah. you're right. You're totally right. Coming to Netflix soon. Yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah, so essentially, he's picking a lot of people, stalking them for a while to make sure that that's the right sort of person that he needs the information from, uh, will go in, do his mind meld, mm-hmm. and uh, will then uh, murder them with uh, something that he finds lying around. Okay. So as not to use like an alien weapon or something. Yeah, I'm okay. beginning to sense where this might be going, but carry on. Mm. Yeah. So now, cut back to Hooper, who's okay. going to be in this. Okay. He is still mentally connected oh. um, to this alien somehow, and uh, he can occasionally see the other people who he keeps grabbing and t- taking information of before getting murdered. Okay. So he uses his military connections to get in touch with like the Home Guard or whatever, or just the government. I don't mm-hmm. know. But they're tracking the alien, so they know what the alien's about. Right. And um, they're trying to trying to find it. But pretty much the only thing they've got to track it is Hooper. Right. And all that Hooper has is just the look of somebody's face. Flashes almost what one might say clues. Mm-hmm. No. No, okay. So the title of the, this is where you get the credits. Okay. Again, half an hour in or half of the film in or yeah. more. I don't know. It's called uh, Battleship 2. Guess who? Oh, guess who? Oh, I think you're going for a clue. Damn think. it. Okay. What did you think, Phil? Did, did I get you? <laughs> you got me. Yes. You got me. Um, to a winner. One thing I, if I may suggest, is when Hooper or Hopper, whatever his name is, getting these flashbacks mm. of these people being murdered, I feel that he should feel that it's like him murdering them. Ooh, Okay. To add okay. that little, like, you know, spice, like he's the one doing it because he's seeing it from the alien's perspective, but he sees his hands doing the choking instead of the alien's hands. So he feels like he's killing people and he's, it's tormenting him till he realizes that it's the connection with the alien. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, could be good. the way I've made it guess who is that he only actually sees their face. Right. Because otherwise, mm-hmm. if, like, if he's seeing stuff about the situation of like what room they're in or wherever, mm-hmm. then it gives too many clues and it kind of takes it away from guess who. But sure. yeah, whatever works. Yeah, I do like the idea that uh, that Hooper's starting to feel like super bad about this because he feels like he's murdering all these people. Yeah, somehow yeah. give him a bit of emotion to actually uh, turn into some kind of a character. Mm-hmm. 
if he can. Yes, give him some kind of depth, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's pretty much all about tracking the alien across America as it heads to the East Coast, mm-hmm. um, which is where it knows uh, the government is. Right. Um, with the aim to get... Uh, well, the aliens made a wild prediction. Remember in 2012, the aliens made a wild prediction that Donald Trump is, in fact, going to be a person of importance. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, God. And we have forgotten to mention the big Donald Trump jokes that they were in this joke in, the, in, in this film. They are in this film, you're right, yeah. It's so upsetting. Right? <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Now, I'd like it if all the people that the alien kind of takes over and stuff are all mm-hmm. played by well-known comedians. Sure, okay. So that just the film's got something going for it, lots of different mm-hmm. personalities. So he's, when you say taking over them, sorry, how do you mean? He's oh, killing sorry, these sorry, people. Sorry, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's killing them. He's taking their, I don't know, memories or something. Okay, so he, he's murdering them and taking their memories, and then Hooper's just having remembering flashes of them. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I yeah. like that, yeah. Like sitcom characters or stand-up comics or... Anything, really, Anything, I don't sure. know. But yeah, yeah. A, a stand-up Anybody comics, can maybe. make a joke mm-hmm. properly. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. So, well, unfortunately, the humans are going to lose this. Okay. Um, and the alien is going to win. He's going to control Donald Trump and turn him into a president. Oh, no. Cut to eight oh, years fuck. later. In, cut to eight years later in 2020. Mm-hmm. It's election year. Donald Trump, however, is not running. Okay. Um, Donald Trump has done uh, so well. He's so smart because of all the uh, the alien murders that have happened. Yeah. He has successfully conned everyone to vote for his successor, a person nobody has seen the face of, and America now elects an alien as president. Oh, okay. And so the alien becomes president of America. Interesting. I like it, but I think maybe. The alien should be disguised as somebody else who's famous and ill-suited to being the president. Got any ideas? Don't know. I mean, it's hard to go worse than I mean, Donald probably Trump. Arnie, because, like, the aliens are massive. True, it would they need to be someone. Like, yeah. Maybe they elect Thanos. Because <laughs> they do look a bit like off-brand <laughs> Thanos. Right? Okay, yeah, so they... they what, well, they elect... What, Josh Brolin doing motion capture? Yeah, Josh Brolin <laughs> runs for president in character as Thanos and wins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sold. On a 50% Sold. people are going to get wiped out ticket. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, no, I like it. Yeah. yeah. Now, Donald Trump, on the other hand, mm-hmm. so now he's no longer the president. He's He's got to the top. Okay. He doesn't need to be there anymore. He's done everything he wanted to do. So he's going to go back to what he knows. Well, he's going he's gonna to start running hotels. Okay. But... America's not working for him because, like, he's he's got beef with the president, really. Sure. So, uh, yeah, he's going to go back into the hotel business and starts buying up loads of property in London. Okay. Starting with Old Kent Road and working his way all the way to Mayfair. Oh, I see what's oh, happening here. God. And he eventually announces he has the monopoly on hotels and houses in London. Oh, how dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Very good, very good. So, there's the next part of this film just going to be a, some... I mean, that could be a part three, I don't know. Yeah, like just someone that's tr- that's that's desperately done. trying to stay to, to not land, trying to get around, travel through London without having to stay in a hotel owned by Donald Trump, and it just gets harder and harder and harder because he owns everything. Or maybe it's Donald Trump desperately trying not to land on income tax. Oh, that's like. good too, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He yeah, always can like... declare bankruptcy, it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> go to jail, go directly to jail. Do not pass go. So yeah, that was Battleship 2, guess who? I like it. Um, With a little bit of Monopoly. Yeah. yeah. And a little bit at the end, yeah. Very um, good. An alternative title I had, which maybe a listener submission has done or not, but I just wanted to say it in, up front, was just to call it B2. Okay. As in, like, the square in Battleship, just B2. Oh, oh. very good. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But I couldn't... Uh, this wasn't enough of a Battleship sequel. So no, 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 yeah. That, that was kind of its own thing. Yeah. But I, I, it's interesting. I like it, yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's fair. It's yeah. fair. Yeah, I, I like, like how it. we all tried to... Bring in board games into our yeah, stories. Yeah, we, we're going very close to each. But we, we yeah. just picked our own board games. Are we is... doing this for the whole season? <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it'll crop, crop up again. Yeah. Mm. But I like that because they, right, they are making a Monopoly movie and I have no idea what that's going to look like. But the idea of like a I horrible... Think, I think a Monopoly movie could actually work really well. But again, there's no characters in Monopoly. Well, if you make everybody as in like... The dog? The, maybe they're all gangsters and they've got nicknames. Okay. So one's the dog, one's the hat, one's the car. Oh, okay. Like Jimmy the dog or Frankie the hat. Yeah, like, that's, yeah. That, that's that sort of yeah. thing. I don't know. Sure, yeah. Um, no, that could but work, yeah. A, a, yeah. a dystopian monopoly about trying not to stay in a Trump hotel and then you get there springing up everywhere. Like, yeah. I like that. That could really work. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Very good. Okay. Cool. So does that mean listener submissions? I think we might be at that point, yeah. Oh, let's get started. Okay. Uh, well, to be fair, I've not got that many, but just uh, one of them is very, 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 very long. Oh, great. Yes. <laughs> 
Phil's already seen it. Okay. So I've got a few good comments. Like uh, JC Cartier said, I love this. Utterly daft fun. Yeah. Just on the film just in general. Yeah, yeah. sure. Great. I mean, I, I, could, I, I, did, I did enjoy it myself, but I can appreciate what it was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Stephen Waller, I will admit I stole his idea, but he is, was just a line. He said, fantastic film in a trash way. As for a mad sequel, one of the aliens escapes Hawaii and a man hunters on. Boom, it's guess who. Uh, okay. So yeah. there's my uh, inspiration. That's fair. Sure, yeah. That's fair. Stole it. Sure. Simon Monk Tripman has said, the obvious question to ask is, what is other classic games we can adapt? So, mm-hmm. for a prequel... Is this the long one? No. Okay. <laughs> this is a medium. Okay. Um, <laughs> for a prequel, would be something like Battleship, but smaller. So naturally, the answer is Noughts and Crosses. Uh, okay. Or Tic-Tac-Toe, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. As for other games you could spin off, um, you could definitely do a solid, event- solid adventure movie made out of Snakes and Ladders. Yeah. Oh, yes, that could work. Like maybe an Indi- Indiana Jones sort of thing. Mm, yeah, Jumanji style. I was thinking, actually, John, that yours was going to have a bit of Snakes and Ladders in it. Yeah, that Since was one I didn't think jungle. to work in. Yeah, it could have mm. done. It could have done. But I prefer you doing the Hungry Hippos. Yeah, it felt more ludicrous. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also a disaster movie called Jenga or Kaplunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess Phil, you kind of got there first. Yeah. Or a National Treasure Star movie where it's a race against the bad guys to align a series of mystical ancient disc-shaped artifacts before the bad guys do, mm. called Connect Four. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, finally. Uh, from that person. Uh, what about a film about code breakers called Scrabble? Ah, uh, that's good. That's good, yeah. Yeah, so a lot, lot, lot of good ideas there. Mm-hmm. With the code breaker one, you could actually still do it like Battleship code breakers, and they have to do a Scrabble moment, like they did with the buoys to get the uh, the locations of the, the ship. They could do a, one with Scrabble where they're putting down tiles, you know, because they, they have to use an old school system and it's like Morse code and stuff. Yeah. Could work. It could Good absolutely work. work, yeah. We need a vowel. <laughs> um, okay, this one is actually based on a game that I've not heard of, but yeah. I like it anyway. So it's from Tyler Thornton. Um, he said he hasn't seen the movie, mm-hmm. but he assumes Liam Neeson's character has kids and is also a highly trained military person. Well, he's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, the sequel to Battleship is actually an adaptation of the game Don't Wake Daddy. Oh, I know that one. Do it's called Don't Wake Dad in the UK. I don't okay. know why they made it so weird sounding in America, but yeah. sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is a fun film about his teenage kids sneaking out to go to a party. Mm-hmm. There's been lots of close calls of him almost getting woken up. Eventually he does get woken up and uses his military training to track down his kids Shattering world orders in the process. The party is likely to trap some evil organization or something. Sure. Yeah, like it. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay, so Phil, this is the one you've been waiting for. Another fellow paved media host, Dante Pano, has uh, posted a very long one. He does like a lengthy sequel, does Dante, I've noticed. Mm. Well, um, Although we did so well on our Arrival episode that I've got to give him... No, give give it the floor is yours, Dante. Mm. Go for it. So he says... um, I saw a comment somewhere that mentioned shoots and ladders and a board game cinematic universe, and that is brilliant. So, the sequel, Candyland, where our main character goes through this Alice in Wonderland style journey until she gets to the end, where we meet the main character from Battleship and he says, I'm putting together a team. You can't see, but Harry just did excellent (laughs) eyebrow work. Uh, Next sequel, Clue. We follow Miss Scarlet, who is our protagonist on this murder mystery thriller. Again, at the end, we see the battleship guy come out of the shadow saying, nice job solving that murder. I'm putting together a team. <laughs> Next sequel, Operation. It's an intense drama where the main character is the doctor and it shows him working endlessly over this patient who was in a freak accident. This doctor, is he's the best in the country. He's the only one who could maybe save him. It shows the stress the doctor is under, removing each weird item until finally he saves the patient and then the battleship guy shows up. And says, you're a good doctor, put together a team. I want to say I have a huge smile on my face right now because I'm loving this. <laughs> <laughs> Next sequel, The Game of Life. Oh, yeah. We see all our main characters uh, from the previous films going about their lives until Battleship Guy brings them all together and says that they have a big threat that they need to team up to defeat. So the Battleship Guy sends them on a test run of this new machine that plays out your life from the beginning. The goal is to end as happy and as rich as possible. The rest of the film is then playing the game of life and going through stresses, but ultimately coming out rich and happy. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the film, the Battleship Guy is saying, you're ready. Our target is Uncle Pennybags. Cut to black. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Next nice. sequel. Oh my God, it's still going. Oh my God, I thought that was the end. <laughs> it goes, it goes, it goes. Next I sequel, love it. Monopoly. Okay. 
Battleship Guy has gotten everyone together to take down a very high-profile entrepreneur that is threatening to take over the world. And so the characters go through the many mishaps and traps of Monopoly to try and take the world back from Uncle Pennybags. Ultimately, it is the greatest team-up of all time and Pennybags is defeated, thus creating the team of board game heroes soon to be named by Hasbro. Okay. That's it. I love it. That's very good. (laughs) That really does... Put ours to shame. That yeah. brings. That is a. Tr- he truly has created the Hasbro Cinematic Universe. That absolutely. Yeah, it that was. Is, that absolutely was everything. Is, yeah. yeah. So uh, well done, Dante. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. In the game of life bit, mm. is that like an Inception style thing where they have to Ooh, play through yes. life? I like that. I think that would be smart. Yeah. Yeah. Where they, where they have to rather than just like living their lives, where they actually have to play through the scenarios, and then maybe it's like it's the game of life and death. Or maybe they could do a little bit of a riff of that um, Rick and Morty episode where mm. it's just a game where. Oh, what was it? There's like an arcade game where you're just playing oh, yeah. with this one guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's just like Kevin or something. Like, That's you, you made it to like age 65? Whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be good, yeah. Mm. Okay. No, thank you for that, Dan. Say That was great. Mm-hmm. Is that your last one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a few as well. Mine are, mm. as ever, more um, kind of quick fire ones. So Dennis Fanning said, Battleship 2, live fast, peg hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob Farham said, two battle, two ship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Mike Carey said, Battleship 2, flipping the board. <laughs> Scott Rawlings I said... I feel like flipping the board. I mean, he's not, he's not said he's doing a whole universe, but flipping the board would be the end of the universe. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it'd be like the Avengers Endgame of the... Yeah, Earth. yeah, yeah. There's only one option left. We yeah. have to flip the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Scott Rawlings said, Bat 2, ship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nathan Kazoy said, Sunk. It's a romantic comedy. Adam Sandler's in it now. It's on Netflix. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Matthew Bowen said, Battleship 2, Clue. The cast of Battleship spend two minutes fighting off the remaining aliens and then all go to a late screening of Clue. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hmm? Jacob Adams said, Bottle Shop. Turns out the Battleship was a ship in a bottle the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Just adds a whole new layer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scott it's Hillman. Like sort of a... A men in black layer, like at the end of the film, like, oh, yeah, it was all just in a bottle. It was all just in a bottle, yeah. Scott Hellman says, uh, it's about a decade later, Earth and the alien civilization have reached a tentative truce. However, when a third race attacks them, the people of Earth have to decide which aliens to side with. The first ones who attacked but have a certain amount of honour, or the more brutal aliens who are their enemies, and it's more complicated when different countries choose different sides. Oh. So Earth gets split down the middle between these two different alien races. That is Interesting, good. yeah. That um, sounds like that'll be a very complex mess of a movie. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna take that's gonna take a delicate hand. I don't think yeah. Peter Berg is the right director for that. <laughs> uh, Ross Burton said, "Have you considered Snakes and Ladders? Mm-hmm. Another board game with a similar lack of story to cram into a hack movie." Oh, <laughs> wow, Ross is, Ross is getting mad. Uh, is there a mileage in a Monopoly movie? Maybe. Well, I think we've proven that there is. How about Scrabble or Cluedo? Actually, Cluedo will make a great murder mystery film. Someone should make that. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Martin Gardner at MG Loves Fun mm-hmm. said, Battleship Minus One, a version where the aliens travel back in time and prevent the first film from being made. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. Very good, Martin. Ten Word Nerd at TWN Reviews said, Battleship B1, mm. a completely different movie. In this film, a game of Battleship is mysteriously controlling real life ships. So B1 equals hit, C12 equals miss. When it's real lives you're playing with, it's not a game anymore. <laughs> so we have like, it's kind of a Jumanji style thing, I believe. Yeah. So a pair of teenagers or young adults find a game they haven't heard of called Battleship B1. They start playing it. And the next day they're hearing the news about real battleships being sunk on the seas. And seemingly coincidentally, they're all the same ones that they've been playing. Even the bits of the ships that they hit are accurate to the real world. Mm-hmm. So they try telling people, but no one will listen. They have to end the game to end the nightmare. That's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's definitely something. Okay. False Starts Podcast, at False Starts Pod, said, So, my pitch takes place over three eras of naval warfare, the Napoleonic era, World War II submarines, and the present day. Mm-hmm. It stars Taylor Kitsch, Sam Worthington, and Josh Hartnett, and they're all now called Captain Fetch, because Hollywood keeps trying to make them happen. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess they're all three movies starring those actors, and they've okay, all yeah. flopped in the last few years. Yeah. And they're all actors who haven't really ever become mm-hmm. A-listers. Very good. Bloatbusters, at Bloatbusters, said, a bit of a lengthy one here, we follow a man and a woman through all stages of their lives. The man skips college, goes right to work, gets married at a young age, has three kids, and manages to settle down in a nice house upon retirement. 
The woman goes to university, gets a nice job, gets married, has two kids, and eventually retires to a large mansion. Their connection is they both belong to Gamblers Anonymous, and they make bets on who will reach each milestone first. The title, The Game of Life. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, solid. Now you may be asking yourselves, what does this have to do with Battleship? The answer is that it has exactly as much in common with that film as the film with which the game is based actually does. Fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> Very good blockbusters. It's a burn on Battleship there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and finally, Quiz and Hers said Battleship 2 Minesweeper. Nice. Minesweeper, yeah. Y- you know what? Why not? Yeah, Minesweeper. Why was that not a thing? <laughs> That's the, that is the spiritual no, sequel to Battleship. That's the kind of submarine thing, I, f- I feel. Yeah, yeah. Either submarine yeah. or desert. Mm-hmm. One or the other. But yeah, mm-hmm. there's definitely, yeah. Minesweeper, good work. I mean, it's essentially the same thing. More or less. It's similar. You know, you can't see, it's just you click in, you know, you know. I don't know. Mm. Well, anyway, those are our listener submissions for this week. So thank you guys. If you have any sequel ideas for Battleship or any other film we've done in the past, please let us know. We are Beyond the Box Set. You can find us at beyondtheboxset.com. Our podcast is available on all good podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Acast, Google Play, and many more. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search Beyond the Box Set or at Beyond the Box Set on Twitter. Our Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Beyond the Box Set. And we have exclusive merchandise available for sale on tpublic.com. Just search Beyond the Box Set. Mm-hmm. Harry, I believe it is your choice next week. Is it? Yes, it is. Oh, I've not got anything prepared. Oh, dear. Well, <laughs> dun, dun, think fast. <laughs> um, oh, God. Internet, help me. Um, films based on games. Ooh, I've got a maybe. Okay. Ooh. Uh, no, I've got it. I've okay. got it. I'd forgotten about this. No, I, had, I, I was going to do this when I first started, when I first had this idea for games. Okay. So next week, John, mm-hmm. we are going to do the classic. I'm nervous. It's not a classic. Okay, I'm very Not nervous. even slightly. <laughs> Is it two and a half hours long? Let me just check for you. Oh, God. Let me just check. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it is. It, it doesn't feel like it. it, it okay. it's, it's a good time. It's okay. a good time. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Um, it is... Two hours 12. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> We've well, already done Battleship. You can't do it again. Now, this is a film. Uh, it's got Michael Keaton in it. Okay. Let me just have a quick check that who else is in it, just who's not the main character. Oh, yeah. It's got What's His Face in it. Dominic Cooper. Is this a recent film? It's got Rami Malek in it. It is a recent film. Uh, it's 2014. 2014. Dakota what? Johnson's in there. Um, what movie is this? I tell you, Malcolm Keaton is way down low. And it's got Aaron Paul as the main character. We are going to be doing... Oh, God. Need for Speed. Oh, dear God. Yeah. Did that not have a sequel? No. Okay. Not as far as I'm aware. Well, no, it okay. doesn't. Oh, okay. my God. Oh God! Really? Have you seen it? Yep, multiple times. Multiple times. Yep. Great. Uh, okay. Why would Does you this fall into your skyscraper category of perfect uh, action? Maybe? No, not quite. Okay. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, it, it kind of does, but like it's it's just a it's, it's a really good fine action movie. Okay, fine. I'm here for it. Um, it's not. It is. No, it is. Not. Well, I will. Phil, you shut up. Well, I'll, I'll make <laughs> the I'll make my own choices. I'll make my own judgments when I've watched. This film. Sure, yeah. So next week we'll be doing Need for Speed. Cool. Well, fantastic. I look forward to it. So, Phil, thank you. I feel so sorry for you, John. Oh, thank you. Hey, (laughs) it's a good film. (laughs) Well, anyway, Phil, thank you very much. We very much appreciate you for coming on again and joining us. So thank you very much. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Well, I would like to plug, uh, of course, my podcast, The Phil Better Show. It is a movie podcast where I sometimes steal from beyond the box set, Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not intentional. Sure, it's not. Yeah, I apologize multiple times, and still they they had me on, so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I would also like to plug. Are we going to plug the uh, you know the big news? Yeah, this is. Um, I mean, this is actually recorded the day before uh, me and Phil and Dante and Jason and Maisie, who John you might not know so well, launch Pave Media. Oh, is it going out tomorrow? The podcast network. Exciting. Um, yep. I mean, listeners, by the time you 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 you'll be listening to this, you'll have already heard the intro on the start. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, we're we're launching a podcast network uh, for independent podcasts across the world. Um, we're starting with, uh, of course, uh, this podcast, my podcast. Uh, like uh, Harry said, uh, Maisie, Dante, and Jason, their podcasts are joining in. So we have uh, Batman vs. the World, Big to Differ, as well as Let's Get Contextual, uh, coming together to make a network to help 
uh, smaller podcasts grow their audience to larger sizes and uh, yeah so it's going to be fine you can find us at pavemedia.net we are on all social media at Pave Media Net. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Just double checking. Um, and <laughs> it's a fantastic looking website, though, isn't it? Yes, it's a. It's a. Tell me, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Harry has put a lot of effort into it, and it's a beautiful website. Very easy to navigate. Uh, you can see all the shows that are going to be part of it. If you are a podcaster listening to this and you are interested in joining the network please do submit your podcast. We would love to uh, take a look at it and see if we can help you uh, become bigger and better. Yeah. And, uh, well, same for if, you, if you're an advertiser looking to... Um, oh, yeah, of course. Know, what, if you would what, like what, to advertise. Why didn't you target audience? If you, want, if you want to put some adverts out on a, in a different, different market, then pavemedia.net is probably a good place to do so. Mm, how mm. exciting. Yeah. Cool. Is that all? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. So uh, thank you very much, Phil. It and, was my uh, pleasure, guys, and thank yeah. you very much for having me on and enjoying this romp of a ride. Uh, it was it was something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm sure we'll have you on again at some point in the future. So, uh, yeah, and uh, excited for the launch of Pave Media. Mm. Good times. Yeah. Great. So, which, is, which is already out now, by the way, yes. pavemedia.net. Yes, I'm speaking from, to you from the past. Yes. yes. <laughs> Great, dun, cool. Dun. Thanks, Phil, and thanks, Harry, and join us next week for... Need for Speed mm-hmm. with Aaron Paul. Yes, yes, that film. It's a good film. I'm excited. God. I can't wait. It is. It's a good film. I like well, it. Well, we will Run. find out next week. Run. My parents like it. Oh well, they are the barometers. You know, mm. Dom Hemingway. Mm. Mm. Bait. Bait. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Wow. I'm shaking my head in shame. Mm. Just so. Anyway, okay, cool. Right, thanks a lot, guys. See you next week. Bye. 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 Chicken burrito.